Yes, today I'm going to talk about how I'm using juice to port GeoShred to, um, to other systems besides iOS. Uh, I'm, I'm Nick Porcaro here, and I'm one of the main instigators of GeoShred. There are a couple of others in the audience, uh, Julia Smith and Pat Scandalis. Um, so, it, you know, it's really good to be, to be in San Francisco doing this. This is kind of my home turf. Uh, anybody's got any questions, um, let me know. Uh, and the Commonwealth Club, which, it's just an awesome place. Anyway, in case you don't know what GeoShred is, here's a quick little uh, demo. Let me make sure I got the audio going in the right place. Yeah, I think so. And of course, it's the internet's not working. Great. Well, that's why we've got backups. Uh, let's see. There we go. Let's just play this. So um, basically, there's, there's three main synthesizers that are, that are in there. Julius's uh, guitar model, which you, you heard last. And then there are the Geo Swan models, which are from audio modeling. And then the uh, Nada models, which are from uh, our buddy Sutu in Bangalore. And um, it all runs on, on iOS, which is, which is great, except that it's stuck on iOS, which is not so great. Um, so uh, I started looking at, you know, how am I going to, and, and there's a lot of UI in this thing. You can only imagine there's, we've got something like, oh, I don't know, 20 instruments in there right now and about another 10 coming in. Each of them has got a complex UI. Most of them were, were developed with, um, then there's a whole bunch of effects boxes and whatnot, and those things were mostly handcrafted, the interface builder. So it's a big job to try to get all the stuff in juice. Uh, luckily, um, this is an example of what one of the UIs looked like. This one was actually written in juice. And actually, this, this is a sneak preview of a new feature, a, a strumming surface I'm adding in GeoShred. And this is a, a juice um, UI. And um, this is an example of the first version of GeoShred running on, on Linux. And um, there it is running under Reaper. OK, so again, we want to make this thing portable. So we got Linux and Windows and Android and Mac OS, because I'm greedy and I want to make a hell of a lot of money. Um, so no, just kidding. We, we want to just do good and, and get this, this beauty out in the world. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so um, Plug-in GUI magic is the, the trick that, um, that I'm going to use, uh, suggest, or, or something like it. Uh, I know uh, Tom's working on um, uh, some, doing some stuff um, with uh, you know, web uh, UIs that could work inside of a web browser. This is a similar kind of idea. You basically just have a big XML tree. And the idea is you basically have this big XML tree, and then you could, uh, you could turn it into, into code. And Daniel Waltz is the, uh, the guy to thank for this, who did plug-in GUI magic. Now, Daniel's got a great example on YouTube that I put in here. He did a couple of um, uh, videos in the uh, audio programmer um, channel, where he, he showed plug-in GUI magic. But um, it is fantastic. But the problem was, it was it's designed for, for one audio processor. We all, all know what a Juice audio processor class is. And I've got something like 20 or, th or 30 of them. How am I supposed to deal with that? All right. So that was the number one problem. How do I have multiple editors, uh, Daniel-style editors, in, in GeoShred? Number two, how do I make it fast enough? Because, well, 
frankly, it wasn't fast enough, so we had to do some optimization. And then, um, then the other thing is, it, it's, it's awfully cool for, I, I want to still be able to use it for, for all the, you know, the stomp boxes, but then I want to be able to use it for the main app and for the control surface editor. In, in GeoShred's got this control surface editor, you could basically just, well, I don't know if you could, you, there it is. It's all those sliders at the top over there. And um, what I want to be able to do is not just have that stuck in this, this grid with only six or seven things. I want to be able to have a million things up there if you want, or as many as you can cram in the damn screen. So I want to have completely flexible UI design. I want to get somebody like Peter Drescher to, to um, you know, design this for me, or a, a web designer, or somebody. I don't want to do it all myself. I got, I got other things I want to do. Okay, so that's, that's the plug-in GUI magic. That, that's the motivation why I, I, I went to something like this. I, I try doing it myself. Listen, I, you know, there's that whole proportion you think you do with laying out boxes. I call that drug dealer math. It's, it's just not interesting. You know, this proportion here, this proportion there, this, the, it's like, it, it gets old really fast. So you need something like a flex box, right? So I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of pounding, the, pounding this a little bit because it's, it's arduous when you have a lot of UI to try to lay those things out yourself. You just don't want to do it. So, um, all right, so that's the UI thing. And then getting into the juice stuff, I looked, David Rowland did a great talk. I think it was 2017 about value trees. We use that extensively. And again, plug in GUI magic. We uh, leverage off the Flexbox and Grid. to CSS web standard. So anyone that knows CSS should you know, be able to do it. But not only that, there's a drag and drop GUI editor, so you don't even really need to write code. So the main, the main aspects of GeoShred that we're porting, there's a preset editor, control surface editor, there's the keyboard, and Julius has got a great start on the uh, keyboard, um, you know, sort of this, um, this grid, this isomorphic keyboard. Romain actually did one not that long ago as well. Well, actually, it was a hell of a long time ago, but um, it, it was cool, a cool early experiment. Uh, there's also, a, you, know, you could have a conventional keyboard and uh, plug-in GUI magic. I wrote my own uh, completely stylized uh, keyboard for this uh, destroy circuits, all circuits project that I'm doing. And, um, and then, so once you've got all these, these components, you can, um, uh, you basically have, you've got GeoShred back together. Now, if it's running on the Mac or on Linux or on Windows, you're going to need something to control it with, like a, like a GeoShred which is also a great MIDI, uh, MIDI uh, controller. All right, again, the preset format. L let, let's see if, uh, if the internet's up for me now. It's gonna give me a break. Yeah, okay, thank you. Th this is what it's like. It's basically, it's, it's attributed XML. This is one of Daniel's uh, magic files. And if Daniel, if you're out there watching this, you'll wonder what the hell is UX button. Well, it's, it's a text button, but I just, I just kind of juiced it up to, to make it easy, excuse the pun, to, to, to make it easy to have images in there and do other kinds of things and make it blink and do somersaults or whatever I wanted to do, make it bring up other sorts of menus. Okay, so, so each GeoShred preset now, you can just edit it by text, just pop into Emacs or whatever, or Xcode, and then that's a layout file, and then the actual signal processing and, and MIDI processing looks like this. And you essentially have a bunch of processors laid out and then a control surface. So the idea is I, I want to have user interface to generate, that generates this file and, and, and reads from this file. Thank you to uh, Chutton, uh, who turned me on to the idea of having multiple audio processors in one loop. Um, thanks again for that one. So that, that's how, that's how GeoShred works. It's a plug-in. But it actually, it ticks a whole bunch of other audio processors that are also like plugins. So that's, that's sort of the key secret of the, the signal processing in this, in this thing. Um, and that's, that's just what I was talking about. This, this is Jutton's um, main loop over here, I'll call it. But then, boy, I'm just giving you some really cool secret here. Here's how you tick a, a bunch of audio processors and then mix them and run them through an effects chain. One page. Now, of course, in reality, it's not that simple. But, um, and then Ayal Amir, a shout out for the uh, build system. I, I know you're, you're around here somewhere, Ayal. Uh, CMake, you got to have CMake. And uh, then how the heck do we get Linux running dual boot? I, gotta, I, I leaned on Lee Smith for that, for that one. Uh, but there's a 
the key thing is if you got an old Mac, find the reboot, the refind uh, boot manager and ext4 for your partitions and then just go crazy downloading packages and ask me if you really want to do that. Okay, uh, I talked about the, the three instrument types again, Geo, Swam, uh, Julius, uh, Guitar, and Nada instruments. So this guy, Sutu Nagaraj, basically ap approaches us uh, with this, this killer demo. He studied all of Julius's uh, work and, and did a fantastic uh, set of Indian and other South Asian instruments, some Chinese instruments, there's a lot of them coming. And um, we integrated them, he and I, uh, in, into GeoShred as, um, as these audio, audio processor classes. All right, so now I'm going to just get into it a little bit. I'm just going to go even more off script than I already have. Okay, so this is, this is it. Am I getting audio out of it? Oh, oh you know what? That's, that's the first thing, Daniel. Uh, how you change a button to make the audio go somewhere else. I want it to go there. Okay, let's see if that works. There we go. So this is a not a cello. All right, this, this is sort of a, an early version of what GeoShred might look like. And like I was saying before, it, it doesn't, doesn't even have to have the GeoShred keyboard. It could have a regular keyboard. The, uh, the editor, the control service layout can be anything. So the, the main editors, again, was like the preset editor. So now, basically, you just have a big, you know, sort of value tree. Whoever did that value tree example, uh, thank you. Um, I, I sort of uh, zhuzh that up a bunch. So here we basically have all the signal processing. And if you want to look at one of these stomp boxes that Pat is so uh, fond of. Um, and, oops, how did I do that? Well, I'm just using my iPad to control this thing right now. It's listening to MIDI in. Um, so I could basically, let's, um, I got the stomp box up here, there. Oh, so cool. I'm on a computer. I could just, I could just move windows around. It's not, it's not hard and everything is just free flowing. Um, so, okay, so that's, that's how that, the processing chain looks. Now, say I wanted to add another control. I just, I just drag it onto there, and boom, there's my, there's my control surface editor. Now, say, say I don't like that knob, uh, I could basically edit the layout. Now, this is uh, Daniel. This is your toolbox running live. So the, uh, basically, the editor, uh, you know, the live editor and the toolbox editor can run at the same time. So say I don't like the way that, that slider works, uh, looks. I could, instead of making it a gold knob, I could make it a, a I don't know, a blue knob. Or a, or a, a Foley's finest knob. Uh, what the heck did I actually make it? Blue, white. Uh, I did make it a Foley's finest knob, but I will make it blue. And now, there we go. Because so we're right near the bay over here. It's just sort of blue for certain times of the day. Anyway, so basically, you, you see, I can basically just drag in uh, components from the patch, organize them any way I want, put graphics back there, put, put a video, um, you know, whatever we, we may want to do. So, um, so that's, that's how this, this thing is going. Um, we're going to go back to the audio. Now, again, in, in case you think these, the UIs for these um, uh, instruments are, are trivial, I'm going to show you that they're not. Um, this is just something uh, we did in our spare time because we were bored. Um, okay, there's there's a, a plug-in GUI magic editor out the wazoo. Okay, it's a it, it's a mini Moog. It's a mini Moog and a cello at the same time. So you can see I've got I got the fancy scope. I've got I've got uh, you know I got knobs here. I've got two state buttons there. I've got I've got chicken heads. Um, you know the turning the scope on and off uh, the MIDI settings. So that's where we're going with with, with this. You know the idea is you basically just use that. Now something like what I showed you for editing that control surface button, turning it uh, gold to blue. That's how you build these these things up. You you would you'd build them. For the individual processors, you you'd, you'd build them up out, outside outside of the preset editor, and you would just and you just throw them all together. I think that's kind of mostly what I wanted to say. Um, let me let me look at this. 
yeah, okay, so, oh, yeah, I know there's a couple of other small things. I'm not sure when this is going to be available for, you know, for Windows and all these other cool things, but I do know there's a Mac Catalyst version that will be available pretty soon, and um, you can always download the current GeoShred on iOS and, you know, hit me up with any questions. Let me show you the, uh, the Catalyst version real quick. That's it. So that looks very much like, like GeoShred on iOS, but it's running on the Mac. And then of course, it'll run inside of Reaper, and it'll run inside of Logic. This little Reaper project's kind of hilarious because it's got, um, oh, I should just buy this thing. How embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, now, they're not asking that much money. All right, so, 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 so I got two versions of GeoShred running in this thing. There's the, the GeoShred uh, Juice as a VST3 plugin, and there's the GeoShred AUV3. <laughs> they, seem, they seem to like each other. So, so that's kind of where we're going with this, and um, I'll just let it go there. Anybody got any questions? Um, fire away. Yeah. I'm here. Can anybody suggest a different way to do the UI conversion? Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe somebody should give the plug in GUI magic a little bit more love. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to, um, apparently. <laughs> All right. Anyway, just just hit me later if you need you need anything. All right.